Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Paul Yor from Injector Dynamics. You like that? Injector Dynamics is one of the premier or best known injector distributors and suppliers out there in the aftermarket. So Paul, I just wanted to, to start by saying how did you get involved in injectors? This is your, your ex Motec, how, uh, how did you get involved in supplying the industry with injectors? Uh, I think it came down to trying to accomplish something as a tuner and I needed injector data to do the job correctly and I would repeatedly ask injector suppliers for data for information and and a lot of times you just get dead silence the other end like they didn't know what the hell you were talking about other times they try to make you feel silly for asking and so at one point I pulled the fuel flow meter off of our dyno hooked it up to an injector ran a few tests saw a bunch of things that really confused me kept digging, going further, and then uh, Motec became a part of that because they said, look, what it is you're working on, even though we don't fully understand it yet, is something that'll benefit the industry. So they pushed me to keep going, and as I dug further and started to, to learn about the injectors and, and how they reacted dynamically, it grew into something a lot bigger, and uh, Motec was instrumental in helping us take that out to the market because they thought it was important. And somewhere in that process, of developing our techniques for characterizing injectors, we started to find uh, not just what we saw, an injector does this or an injector does that, we started to see what makes an injector work well, what makes an engine idle smooth, what makes an injector easy to tune, uh, what spray pattern works best in a motor and for what reason. Uh, and from that, the ID1000 was born through a lot of testing. We did a lot of injector modifications just, just to see what would happen. And we'd try things out on the flow bench, check the characterization after doing that. You know, How does it respond after we make these changes? Try it out on a motor. And I don't want to say that the ID1000 was an accident, but it was it was uh, part of that, that back and forth testing, modifying to see what worked and what didn't. And um, it just exploded from there. Here we are today. So uh, you know, I'm not sure how to quantify all the steps in between, but like every other thing, it came from, from a need for more knowledge to, to be able to do my job better. It was a result of that. And I've seen that in my own journey as well. You know, I've been in the industry for 12 years, and back when I first started, you know, no, no one knew what injected dead times or battery compensation was. That that table wasn't understood, right. and we didn't get that data. And I think probably one of the biggest things I see that you've done with Injected Dynamics is you've um, you've brought that that data, that information out to the mainstream. And let's be honest, that data was there at some level. If you're an OE manufacturer, OE absolutely, yeah. yeah. That, that data was there, but for us uh, in the in the tuning industry, you know, look, looking at street cars, maybe some race cars, we didn't have that sort of information. So neither did I. That's why. That's how it all started. I didn't have it either. Yeah. Now there's a lot of other manufacturers coming in. They've obviously the the industry's changed and the consumers have changed, and we've seen that 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 data is critical. So obviously everyone else has stepped up their game, and I guess you guys have, have really led the way with that. Now. Dead time is one aspect of it. Also, let's talk a little bit about dynamic characterization because I think that's an that's a aspect that a lot of people don't really understand. Can you tell us what that means? I think the easiest way to describe it is that when, uh, let's go back 10 years, and we want to talk about the difference between two injectors. We would put them on a test bench with a graduated cylinder. We'd turn the injector on by applying battery voltage, open the injector, see how much it flows into the cylinder, graduated cylinder for a given period of time, and we would say, well, this is what makes that injector different from this one. The problem is that we don't do that on a running engine, unless something's really screwed up and you're going to hydro lock the motor. Essentially, that injector is turning on and off all the time. And during that phase of turning on and off, it does a lot of completely unexpected things. So ultimately, uh, the only way to get any any data about an injector that's useful on a running engine is to run it as you would on an engine. So you can take that a little step further than static testing on your diagnostic machine that was designed for uh, finding out whether or not an injector even functioned in the 80s. You can, you can pulse an injector there and learn a little bit about it, but ultimately you have to design equipment specifically to gather that information and then turn that information into something useful. And what I mean by useful is uh, Take the old Bosch 1600cc injector, the old EV1. Now, I know that you have tuned those injectors, and at some point you had an engine that was idling, and you made the pulse width smaller, and the mixture got richer, and you scratched your head and wondered what that was all about, because so did I, and so did a bunch of others. 
And when we first fully characterized one, we could see a dip in the response curve that showed exactly that, exactly what was happening on the vehicle that none of us could understand because it didn't seem reasonable. So the characterization ultimately just comes down to defining how the injector responds uh, dynamically. And you can, as an extension of that, you can create mathematical models like the OEUs, like Ford, GM, for instance, where you plug them in, and because the ECU knows exactly how the injector responds, you can change injectors, paste the new data in, and just go drive the car, because the injector's been fully characterized. Now that, that takes the information that you've got, the dead time, just one step further and, and now you're actually supplying that data for those OEM ECUs, the, the GM and Ford ECUs, so we can literally do that and you know, for us in the aftermarket used to using standalone ECUs, that's not a level we're used to operating at but um, it is very powerful when you can swap injectors, put all that characterisation data in and it'll just start and run yep. just like it was on the stock injectors, yes? Well, it's becoming more common in the aftermarket, too. Look at uh, the new Motex systems. Complete injector characterization for linearity across voltage and pressure. Uh, even some smaller companies like Adaptronic, I'm sure you heard of those guys. They're doing a great job of using our characterization data to account for nonlinearities in the injector, all the other details. So it's, it's spreading from the OE technology off to the aftermarket, which is essentially what you see happening here today with the new fuel pump stuff. We're taking Bosch's OE technology, the things that they've spent you know, millions of dollars to, to uh, understand and generate over the years and, and bringing it to the aftermarket. So the same type of detailed characterization that you're seeing for injectors is now moving out of the fuel pump game too because as you'll find there's a big difference between testing a fuel pump with mineral spirits at room temperature and testing it with volatile gasoline at high temperatures like you do on a real vehicle and that's the next bit that we're going to introduce to the market. Just let's move back to injectors uh, for a second and we talk, you just mentioned the, the old Bosch uh, Indy or Bosch 1600 and that, it's an in, injector that I've uh, had a bit of experience yeah. with with my own Jaguar yeah. and uh, let's be honest they're a horrible thing. Just looking at that compared to the modern crop of injectors, let's say the ID2000 which you know is probably the closest comparable flowing injector, yeah. what sort of advantages would you see from swapping to those dirty old Indy Blues to a, a modern ID2000? There's two big differences. The first is linearity. So uh, <clears throat> when we talk about the peaks and dips in the response curve that allowed you to see strange things like reducing the pulse width uh, resulting in higher flow, that problem is gone with the ID2000, completely gone because the linearity is better. But the other thing is that the spray pattern on those old injectors was a very broad pattern. And ultimately what happened is that most of that fuel ended up on the runner wall. So for any conversation you might have about atomization, for instance, once you spray that liquid, those droplets of fuel, on the runner wall, they coalesce again and just turn into a stream of fluid. So essentially what we want to accomplish with any fuel injector is for the fuel to not touch anything but air on the way into the cylinder. And so the ID2000 is a very narrow spray pattern, which does a good job of accomplishing that. That's one thing a lot of people I think don't understand is that uh, liquid fuel, uh, a pool of fuel actually doesn't burn you. You want that finely atomized spray pattern to actually give us good combustion. Well you just said, you just combined two things into one sentence. You said atomized and spray pattern. When in fact they're two very different things and, and again take a Windex bottle and you pull the trigger and you say wow that's just phenomenal. Look at the size of those droplets. It's great. And then spray it against the glass and you've got big gobs of fuel running down there. So. Uh, the spray pattern, whatever the atomization quality is coming out of the injector, it's important to get that straight through to the cylinder without having it coalesce on the wall. So those are really two very separate things. And generally speaking, with all of our testing, we find that the spray pattern is far more critical to the operation of the engine than the atomization quality itself or the droplet size. Okay, let's just talk a little bit about the current crop of injectors that are out there. Obviously, you're well known for your ID1000s and your ID2000s. Now, there's other manufacturers out there supplying effectively what is a very similar injector from Bosch. And I know there's a lot of banter out there on the forums about uh, forums che forums. cheaper injectors, <laughs> etc. So let, let's just talk about what uh, what the differences are between a injector that's come out of Injector Dynamics and another just a generic Bosch injector that you could buy probably for a bunch less money. Yeah, well the first thing to consider is that the uh, the obvious thing that happens when you run a very large injector in a car is that you have much smaller pulse widths. And so now instead of having a pulse width of say three milliseconds or even greater with a stock injector, 
where you're well within the linear operating range, you're, you're operating at the very bottom range of the injector. And so uh, the very first thing that's critical is that you match the flow between injectors. And that's, that's, that's an important buzzword today is flow matched because it's, it's easy to say and it's hard to prove otherwise. You have the injectors flow matched across the operating range. And it's one thing to say it, it's another to accomplish it correctly. And this goes back to having to build and design equipment that's meant specifically for that purpose. And I'll, and I'll bring up the, uh, the concept of the diagnostic machine from the 80s again, which is, which is what a typical flow bench was designed to do, is to diagnose, is this injector faulty or not? Because back in the 80s, a lot of injectors failed. So uh, the matching process is, is, a key, is a key parameter. Uh, but the other thing is that there are ways to affect that match as well. And for instance, on the ID2000, which is a core that other people can buy from Bosch as well, we can adjust the preload on the spring in that injector to affect the offset so that we match them uh, not just based on static flow or flow rate, but match the offset as well so that, that the 1% difference, for instance, that we see at 10 milliseconds is the same down at 2 milliseconds. So it's a matter of having the ability to accurately measure what it does and then fine tune it to get it to do that. Just to elaborate on that, because I, I don't know, maybe that might not have been too clear for some of the people Probably out not. there. Uh, what, you're, what you're basically saying is you can get two injectors that at 100% duty cycle are flow matched within a couple of percent, yet when they're down at one or two milliseconds in the area where you might be likely to see an idle, very light throttle cruise, which is important on a streetcar, their matching, their flow matching down at those sort of duty cycles, pulse widths is completely different, that's correct? Very different, very different and it's important to get that right. And uh, one thing to consider is in, in trying to accomplish that type of matching, is your equipment even accurate down there? If you take the same injector and test it at, we'll say, 1.8 milliseconds 10 times in a row, does your equipment give you the same answer 10 times in a row? I mean, you can match results. Whether or not those results are accurate are another story altogether. And my argument all along has been that, that pissing the output of a fuel injector into a graduated cylinder uh, is not exactly the way to get the job done, particularly with non-representative fluid. That's key as well. Injectors respond differently with low viscosity fluids at various temperatures, and so it's important during the matching process to simulate the conditions in a running vehicle with a truly representative fluid, a hydrocarbon like iso-octane, for instance, or even pure gasoline, to make sure things match up as they should. But ultimately, we can talk about this a lot, and you can take your fuzzy microphone to a bunch of other booths and talk to a bunch of other people and get some, some similar buzzwords or some similar input, but at the end of the day, it's demonstrable results. And so if I had to define one reason that I think we've done well and we continue to do well is that the tuners, the guys like you, who actually have to work with this stuff on a daily basis. They use it, they try it, they get the opportunity to see if what I said is bullshit or not. It's that simple. And over time, the tuners start to choose the thing that works because if I give you a set of bad injectors and tell you to tune a car, the car doesn't run very well. Well, very rarely does someone blame the injectors. It's your fault. Simon screwed up my car, right? And so that's why we become the tuner's choice is, is for that reason. They, they get to try all of them, whether or not they want to, and ultimately, what we offer makes their job makes their job easier and the end result better, which makes Simon look good, right? <laughs> Thanks Paul for that. We we really do love the amount of science and uh, technology that you've applied to the injector market and it's, it's really um, improved obviously the crop of injectors out there and I think you've probably driven your competition as well to provide a, a better product. For us in the tuning industry we're getting better data, we understand better what those injectors are doing in our engines and uh, as you say that's making my job easier there you go. But, but it's Andre not Simon. That's right. <laughs> you got to leave that in. You are not the first person, so we'll let you off. Look, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us today, Paul. <laughs> I can't stop laughing, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it says right there. Wait a minute. See, right there it says Simon. <laughs> Does everybody see that? I want to make sure everyone sees that. Yeah. Zoom in. He's, he's right. Thanks, you all. There you go. <laughs> We're even. That was good. Thanks, buddy. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.